Thanks, John. Uh, good evening. We're extremely excited to be here tonight uh, to announce uh, a new member of our um, pitching staff, uh, someone that we've spent a lot of time on um, this offseason, uh, studying, understanding um, exactly who he is and uh, the leadership that he's going to provide for our young pitching staff moving forward. Um, you know, as we went into this offseason, we knew that our st uh, pitching staff was an area where we wanted to uh, address. And um, we think John Gray is someone who is uh, really not only the right talent, but the right person uh, who's going to provide a veteran um, leadership, um, extremely uh, hard worker, competitor, uh, somebody who's been successful in one of the most difficult pitching environments in baseball in Colorado. Uh, we're very excited about John's potential and the next step in, in his career, the next chapter. Uh, and we couldn't be more excited to welcome he and his wife, Jacqueline, to the Texas Rangers family. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to JD. Yeah, thanks, CY. Um, you know, we had, uh, we had a, an opportunity to, to visit with, with John and, and Jacqueline uh, over, over Zoom uh, over Thanksgiving. And um, one of the things that really stood out was uh, John's curiosity and, and interest in the various resources that uh, our, our organization can put forward. And so our, our pitching coaches that were on the call, along with, with, with the three of us, um, and, and Doug Mathis and Brennan Seguer, had put together a really neat presentation with kind of some specific thoughts and areas that they, they felt that, that uh, you know, John could, he's already been an outstanding big league pitcher, but could take it to another level. and. Again, what stood out was the, the, the questions that John asked, the way that, that he kind of lit up and, and as we went through the resources and, and some of the follow-up to that. So that, that excited us. Um, you know, I think for, as, as decision makers, you know, we're, we're bringing in um, input from a, a variety of areas. And when you know, our scouts that are out in the field and, and have watched John from you know, at a young age up to you know, third pick in the country and blow through the minor leagues and have success in the big leagues when they say one thing and then the analysts back that up and our coaches back that up, that's very reassuring uh, on our end uh, to, to be able to make a decision, make an investment into somebody like this who's, who brings that type of pedigree and, and, and type of background. So uh, his, the curiosity, the drive to improve off of a, you know, a pretty substantial uh, baseline of performance is, is really intriguing and, and, and obviously the, the Kind of local connection with uh, uh, this part of the country and, and, and the desire to be here was, was an added bonus. So um, really excited to welcome uh, Jacqueline and, and John Gray and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good fit. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. I'm open. I just, uh, I just want to say thank you, uh, for the time being up here, and uh, to the owners and the coaches and all the good talks we've had. Um, but we're just really excited. Jacqueline and I are so excited to be here. And uh, you know we see Texas as a as a home to us, and uh, you know we're ex we're excited to see what we're going to accomplish. And just uh, I just want to say thanks and uh, open to questions. Okay, just raise your hand if you have a question, Evan. So John, two things. One, what stood out about the presentation that the pitching coach has made? Um, what were the things that kind of they said that you were already formulating kind of in your head? Yeah. So it. it there was something I always felt like, especially the last few years, I felt that I, there was a lot more inside of me that, that hasn't been unlocked. And, uh, you know, when we had our conversations and we went over the, the data and, 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 and different things, it was just, uh, it was really easy to see if there were things in there. And not only do I feel that, other people can see it too, and they can help me with it. And, uh, yeah, it just sparked a fire, and it, it really made me excited for this year and uh, what's to come in the team. And the second part is, we spent four hours here today going from one press conference to another as this team's announced player. There was obviously some momentum in, in talks over the past four days. Did you kind of get yourself caught up in that a little bit? I, and I'm not saying that that influenced your decision so much, but did you did you feel that momentum that this team was 
going in the right direction with the number of guys that they were significantly involved with? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great to see and even better to be part of. Go to Chris. John, um, your career home road splits in Colorado are kind of reverse. Uh, pitch better home than you did on the road. You've been thinking of the opposite. Can you just first talk about the, the challenge that it was to, to, to go back and forth from hell from mile high elevation to not, and then how you think you can move past that now you're pitching in more? Right. Uh, from my personal experience, I always thought it was the toughest thing about pitching in Colorado was going from ho road to home and making that constant switch all the time. Uh, I found ways to be successful at both, but just having to make that switch a lot, I think was, uh, you know, just wasn't, it didn't help you repeat things. So, uh, you know, getting the opportunity to stay, you know, this one place this whole time, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And to feel the same every day, you know, to see your stuff work really well every day and the same, I think that's, that's very beneficial. Yeah. Um, either for Woody or CY, I guess how important is it bringing John in to stabilize a young rotation? Both, I mean, you have young pitchers both on the big league level and throughout the farm who will, you know, eventually be up at this level in Arlington. Yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, quarters, so. um, this, this, this work? one working? Yeah, this one. Um, you know, see why I hit on it a little bit in the beginning there. Um, something that obviously stood out with John, we know he's got elite stuff. We know there's another level to him as a pitcher. Um, we're really intrigued by that, and we feel like there's an ace in there. Um, but, you know, talking to him and his, his willingness to kind of look at our roster and look at the, the youthful, um, inexperienced, you know, pitching staff that we have, we have a lot of talent, um, but we need somebody to help him. We need somebody to kind of, you know, he's had a ton of success in his career. Pitching in probably the most difficult, you know, situation of pitcher. He was drafted by him. He, he like pitched his whole career there. Um, had to deal with adversity that none of our pitchers have ever had to go through. Um, so that just sharing that story, sharing those stories of how to get through that. How did he go from, you know, Colorado back to pitch in Anaheim or go? It's really difficult. So I think that, you know, and also his willingness to kind of like take it to another level. This guy's got elite stuff. And you know when he can share those stories with Dane Dunning and, and Taylor Hearn, they're in there in the beginning of their career. Uh, the Spencer Howards and you know the Glenn Autos and the AJ Alexis are going to learn a ton from this guy. Um, and, and we need that. Frankly, you know he wants to win. He wants to create a winner here. Uh, we're going to need that leadership on the pitching side. So that's uh, you know it's awesome to talk to him about it. Um, like like I said in the you know with Seager and Simeon, I don't expect him to be anybody but John Gray. I want him to do it in his own way, in his own style. Um, but those those conversations will be vital for our guys to, to learn. What else? Levi, wait for the mic, please. Hey, uh, so I'm, I'm curious to hear a little bit more about this presentation from the pitching coaches. Because it, you know it's one thing to hear, like, we can unlock some potential, and that resonated with what you believe. But I'm curious, uh, not to get too inside baseball for the, the audience, but like, what, was there anything specific that they talked about that really caught your attention? Um, it, it was a lot of information, uh, but yeah, but, uh, but all good. And it was with every pitch. It was, it was with, um, some things that have, that have been like, I guess my kryptonite over the last couple of years, some things that I think have slowed me down. Um, it just seems like they're right on point with that and they can give me something I can work with now and I can understand how it works. And this is why. And that was really important to me to see all of that. Uh, no, you know, you know, you're in the best hands if you got all that information. Jeff. In addition to the information they gave you, this team lost 102 times last year. What did you think about the vision they laid out as far as what their goals are and what maybe their timeline is? Well, I think it's great seeing what's happening. I mean, it's 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 awesome to be a part of that and. Uh, yeah, and I, and, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm not familiar with the league that much, with this, this division. But, uh, but man, it's, it's something to be part of right now, just seeing the moves that are being made and how good these guys are. To know that you're brought in with those guys, it's, it means the world. And uh, it's a heck of a lot to look forward to. Other questions? Go ahead, Jeff. Anybody on Zoom has a question, just raise your hand. Can you 
give uh, scattered reports on Corey Seager and Cole Kelman? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I remember what I pitched. I think I remember pitching Corey up and in a lot with fastballs, trying to stay away from the middle of the plate for sure. And uh, Calhoun, same thing. Stay out of the middle of the plate with him, pitch him up. Those are my, those are my go-tos. Jerry. Got you know, I, maybe this is a part of the presentation. Uh, I know it's, it's uh, you know, the Rangers can, can tell you they want to do X, Y, and Z, but then when you look at the track record, I'm not sure how much you, you've been able to follow this, but in recent years, Mike Miner, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, all veteran pitchers like yourself brought to the organization, and the Rangers have been able to uh, help them produce career years. How much notice uh, do you have of something like that and, and how much does that influence your decision to not only take in whatever the presentation was and how you can improve but to believe that this is a place where you can accomplish it yes and that just helps you believe that i mean just seeing that happen i saw it with my own eyes people that i've played with come here and do a heck of a lot better and uh yeah just knowing that that could be my path is very exciting and then I apologize if you already mentioned this. Art. Did you grow up a Rangers fan? I, I guess you grew up nearby. Who, who did you root for growing up? Uh, yeah, we all, my brother and I used to pretend to be Nolan Ryan and Randy Johnson in the backyard. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we grew, up, we grew up loving the Rangers. We went and saw a Kansas City Royals game, but we, we didn't really watch a whole lot of baseball. But Rangers were our team, and we had, we had favorite players here. Were you Randy? Um, I think I was Randy, and my brother was Nolan. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. Other questions? Levi. So at the risk of making you guys repeat yourself, uh, John and, and Chris, like you, there were quite a few free agent pitchers on the market. Um, what was it specifically about John that set him apart that made him your, your primary target? But, uh, Levi, I think there were a number of things. I mean, I think that all things considered, one, um, John, as a competitor, um, the success he's had, his big league track record, um, the durability, uh, um, for the most part, being able to take the ball and compete. And I think we factored in um, the environmental aspects um, of him being in Colorado. Um, you know, having pitched there as a visitor, I know how difficult that is. And just thinking about what he can unlock uh, in terms of his potential um, being out of that environment in a more consistent environment um, combined with our pitching coaches we just felt like this is a little bit of an upside play and um, uh, while still having you know a great baseline of success that that he has in his career so I think the two things combined it was very very um, apparent to us that this should be a primary target for us and then when we met with him on zoom and learned, uh, you know, his curiosity uh, to get better. That um, you know, John was very clear that um, he feels like the next chapter of his career is going to be his best, and that resonated with us. And that's what we—that's our expectation as well. And it, the alignment of, um, you know, all of those things, I think, led to this decision. Other questions, Evan? So, John, just to go back to that for a second for the to the presentation. Um, I just want to make sure I understand. Were you, are you saying that like you were constantly changing your grip based on the environment around you? To, because when you were back home in Den when you were pitching at home in Denver, mm -hmm. that you had to do something different with your stuff to make it effective. And on the road, you went back to a different kind of grip. Is that basically what you're saying? Uh, very similar. Yes. I, there were, you know, um, my arsenal really changed a lot. The, the how many pitches I threw if I threw my curveball at home or on the road. Um, that, that changed a lot, how I attacked hitters. But, uh, but yeah, the shape of your pitches change, where you start the baseball changes. Uh, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, it's nice to, I guess, get in a spot where, you know, you're not dealing with that. So that's uh, it's really cool. Other 